Guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, September 26th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about the state of Texas and its Senate race that is expected to be far more competitive than Republicans would have hoped going into the 2024 presidential election. Now, the state of Texas is one that Democrats have been fighting for and really hoping to win in future elections for decades on end. It's a very populous state with a considerable portion of electoral vote count, but when it comes down to this Senate race in particular, Republicans have a uniquely unpopular incumbent, Senator Ted Cruz, who ran for president back in 2016, you might recognize his name, who came within three points of losing in the 2018 midterm elections. Now, this announcement of Texas becoming more of a toss-up and a much more competitive race than ever before comes at a time where Democrats are making a concerted effort to win in the state of Texas for the first time since 2002. Democrats are set to spend millions upon millions of dollars in this battleground state with less than 40 days to go, a very competitive position for Democrats to be in uh, in this state, and potentially, you know, future ambitions for Democrats now have been elevated by this investment from the National Party. And the reason I mention that this is the first time Democrats are investing in Texas since 2002 was because that is quite notable. Texas is a state that despite no national investment from the presidential level, from the Senate level, from the gubernatorial level, from the DGA, from uh, the, the uh, uh, DSCC, from the DCCC, uh, even from, of course, a national top ticket campaign, Texas has shown us in recent elections that it is willing to narrow in a way that we don't really expect from a state like Texas. So again, the last time they invested in it was in 2002. They invested in the Democratic nominee for Senate here, who ended up losing by roughly 12 points. And since then, there hasn't really been much of a focus. On the presidential level, though, it stands to show exact reasons as to why there should be more of a focus on Texas, just in terms of competitive nature and what it might mean for the Electoral College in the future. Because back in 2012, the last time we saw a Republican that was not Donald Trump at the top of the ticket was when Mitt Romney at the time was governor. Uh, Mitt Romney from Massachusetts did very well in the state of Texas, defeated President Barack Obama by a margin of 15.8% across this state. Now, Texas never really was competitive from the beginning. From the beginning of the 21st century, Texas had been this very strong Republican state. Bush won it by 21.3. Bush then won it by 23. Then in 2008, John McCain won it by 12. 2012, Romney won it by 16, and then 2016, we saw, that's actually a lot of numbers that are uh, matching up in an interesting way, but in 2016, what happened? Donald Trump only won the state by roughly nine points. And even then, some Democrats were saying, hey, Texas is worth investing in, invest, 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 but the Democratic Party on the national level said, absolutely not. We're not going to waste our money. We're never going to win Texas. A close and competitive race that's a fluke doesn't really mean much about the future of electoral politics. Then came 2020. Donald Trump won Texas by 5.6%. So what in 2012 was a 16-point margin, now was less than a 6-point margin, a 10-point swing in just around eight years. Average that out, roughly 5-point swing in the span of four years. Apply that between now and 2024, Texas in theory could be a state decided by less than half a percentage point. But what we know at baseline is that Texas has gotten far more competitive in recent years. But back to that point about Democrats not investing in it since 2002, let's talk about the last time Texas truly was the most competitive it had been in quite some time. The 2018 midterm elections, when Democrats actually ended up losing seats in the United States Senate, Florida flipped to the Republicans, Indiana flipped to the Republicans, Missouri flipped to the Republicans, North Dakota flipped to the Republicans, but you know the state, one of the few states that really was this massive shining star for Democrats despite no national investments, despite no national headlines around it, it was the state of Texas that when all was said and done, Democrats lost by 2.6% in Texas. 2.6% in 2018. Now, Democrats were quite angry after this in the Texas Democratic Party because they were raising the alarm bells for Democrats across the state and Democrats across the nation. Invest in Texas, invest in Texas, invest in Texas. Why? Because they saw the writing on the wall that it was Ted Cruz who was uniquely so unpopular that he could run alongside the same governor, Greg Abbott, who was elected first with him. Same governor who won by 14 points, 13 points across the state. That in the Senate race, Ted Cruz only won by 2.6. Why does this happen? Well, there were a lot of voters out there that likely voted for Donald Trump, but very much there were a considerable portion of the electorate here that voted for a Republican nominee up and across the ballot, down the ballot, up at whatever it might be, in the governor's race, in the House races, in the agriculture race, whatever it might be, yet still voted for Democrat Better O'Rourke in the Senate race. Why? because they liked him more than they liked Ted Cruz. And again, the lack of investment in this state still translated to Democrats coming within 2.6% of the most populous Republican state in the nation. And now what are we seeing? 
Democrats are in a position where they are now investing in Texas. And it comes at a time that Fox News and the experts they talk to are saying that Texas's race is now a toss-up. But the polling data back in 2018 wasn't actually that strong for Ted Cruz. When you take a look at what the expectations were, it was lean Republican on CNN and Real Clear Politics and Daily KOS and Fox News and Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball. Fox News again having it lean R. Today they have this Texas Senate race as a toss-up. Inside elections, likely Republican. The only firm here that had it as a toss-up was the Cook Political Report. But when you take a look at the polling data, sure, it narrowed in the final stretch of the campaign, but Ted Cruz led significantly throughout the duration of the campaign period. You can see that up until Election Day, Ted Cruz maintained an advantage, not at one point, not at one point did Better work have the advantage except for one Ipsos poll that was conducted in early September. But beyond that, every other poll said Ted Cruz was doing quite well. And in fact, through Election Day, Ted Cruz in some cases had a larger margin. Ipsos, the same one that showed all, all red up by, not all red, a rook up by two points, said Cruz was going to win by five. Then you saw Quinnipiac, the day, you know, days up before the election, said Ted Cruz was going to win by five. You saw the University of Texas Tyler say Ted Cruz was going to win by five. Across the state, the polls had said that Ted Cruz, on the Real Clear Politics Average, you can see this too, on the Real Clear Politics Average, what did we find? That Ted Cruz was up on average in the polls by 6.8%. 6.8%. The last poll of the cycle, Trafalgar, who loves to tout how accurate they are until 2022 came around when they pretty much fell off the face of the earth. But Trafalgar, in 2018, Ted Cruz was going to win by nine. What did he win by? 2.6. And again, this is without investments from the National Party. And don't get me wrong, 2018 is not the same year as 2024 and vice versa, right? This election year is far more competitive for Democrats. But Texas is in a unique position where now Democrats again are investing for the first time since 2002, and that means something. What also means something is the fact that the data we are seeing in this state is pointing closer to a much more competitive race than it even did back in 2018. And again, that matters. Because in 2018, Democrats were working under the assumption Ted Cruz was going to win by five, six, seven points. And so that's why they didn't really invest in the state. And although Beto O'Rourke came close, he ultimately still ended up losing. And Ted Cruz was elected to another six-year term in the United States Senate. This time, Colin Alred leads in the most recent poll that we've seen taken in the state. But overall, what we're finding is that it is much more competitive when it comes down to polls compared to the last election. And if the last election's indication was anything, it was that Democrats outperformed what the 2018 numbers would say in this battleground state. Now, I still think Ted Cruz comes out ahead in the state of Texas. But the fact that Texas even is a toss-up in the first place is pretty bad news for the Republican Party, not just for this cycle, but for decades to come. If you just think about Texas at large, what it would mean when it comes down to the Electoral College should Democrats win the state of Texas. You know, you can take a look. At the 2020 election, you swing Texas towards the Democratic Party, what do we end up? 344 electoral votes for the Democrats. But the more important reason why it matters is because when you take a look at other states, for instance, Arizona, and you give it to uh, the Republican Party, it still doesn't make a dent because Texas is carrying the Democrats over the finish line. And same can be said when it comes down to Georgia. Same can be said when it comes down to Nevada. Same can be said when it comes down to Wisconsin. Same can be said when it comes down to Michigan. And then it would require Pennsylvania flipping to Trump. And even then, it's an eight electoral vote college victory, assuming, assuming Democrats do not win any other states that I've characterized thus far. Meaning, let's say all of a sudden you see a Hillary Clinton effect where you win every state on the map in 2016, except you add in Texas, what happens? Joe Biden would have won the election. Same electoral map as 2016, what would have happened? Hillary Clinton would have won the election. This circumstance we are in when it comes down to the state of Texas, it is really not something <clears throat> that we have spent enough time unpacking or understanding because the electoral ramifications would last for decades on end. That's why Republicans are trying so hard to not lose this state. Because guess what? For as much as we talk about money in politics, as much as we talk about the way fundraising and, and, and cash on hand advantages sway certain political discussions and conversations, Texas is one of those conversations. When you take a look at who's spending the most money at the 2024 cycle, you can see that in terms of who has raised the most, in terms of who has spent the most, what we're finding is that it is very much Ted Cruz. He's raised $59 million. Colin Allred has raised just $38 million. In terms of who spent more, Ted Cruz has spent nearly double the amount that Colin Allred has spent. Cash on hand, Ted Cruz has more cash on hand 
than Colin Allred. And the reason why this matters is because Texas is a state that very clearly the national Republicans are worried about. They're going to act as if they never even second-guessed Texas, especially if Ted Cruz wins. But $60 million being spent in a race this 10 years ago would mark the most expensive Senate race in United States history. For Republicans today, this is just them defending territory that, in theory, they are supposed to be saying is safe red, solid red, no real concern. But money speaks otherwise. And you have to think, too, because so much money is being spent in the state of Texas— Think about what that means in terms of diversion of resources from some states that Republicans from high-profile races back in 2018 thought they could target in 2024. For instance, when you take a look at the Senate races we're working with in the 2024 cycle, I bring up the 2018 map because I remember immediately after Republicans said our targets here, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Montana, Arizona, Nevada, uh, you know, all these states focus on Maine, maybe the additional, uh, you know, focus back on some states that they want. But overall, Republicans were saying, we have many reasons to believe the next time this map comes up, we will expand on where we are here. And while I do agree they will expand in West Virginia, and they will likely win the state of Montana, beyond that point, I don't know what else they can get. Why? Because Democrats have done a great job at securing the necessary funds, resources, and incumbents to do very well in many of the other battleground states as well. You can see that on the map here, many Democrats are not retiring from the U.S. Senate. Democrats, quite frankly, aren't worried about Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania when it comes down to the Senate race. Why? Again, because Democrats have done things correctly in these races. And Republicans just simply are very limited in their resources and their spending. While they do have tens of millions of dollars, absolutely. On one end, if you are spending $60 million in Texas and you have a Republican going to the same mega donors and the same basis of constituencies and saying, fund my race, that's one less dollar or 60 million less dollars that could be spent in other battleground states. But it needs to be spent in Texas. Why? Because it's narrowing. Because Ted Cruz is so unpopular that it is now a toss up in a state that Republicans love to refer to as their own California. Because it holds 40 electoral votes, its electoral significance is at the top for Republicans, but it certainly isn't at the top in terms of how voters are treating them or re responding to Republican rhetoric in this state. Texas is a Republican state until it isn't. And Ted Cruz has brought us so exceptionally close to realizing that maybe it isn't, that now Texas is receiving endorsements and funding and resources in a state that Democrats a year ago entirely wrote off as a Ted Cruz victory. And I'll admit, I was one of those people. When I was looking at the matchup between Biden and Trump, Texas was on the last, on the last of my list when it came down to states the Democrats even should consider investing in. But now that Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party at large have raised hundreds of millions of dollars since that swapping out of the Democratic nominee, since July 21st, you know, half a billion dollars since then at least, and that's just on the presidential. A lot of the down ballot races have raised even more when you combine forces. You know, roughly a billion dollars being raised by Democrats. And so what are they doing? Deciding how they're going to spend it. And a big reason for this is because now they are starting to realize, wait a minute, if Ted Cruz only won by 2.6 in 2018, maybe he's vulnerable in 2024. Now, I could have told you that, but I still believe that Ted Cruz was on track for a pretty substantive victory because I believed at the time that President Biden would drag down the Democratic Party in the down ballot races. What do I know now? That likely isn't the case with Vice President Harris. And while I still think she loses Texas on the presidential, the odds and likelihood of Democrats winning the Texas Senate race have actually gone up quite tremendously. And that is not something to ignore. Democrats are in a position where they can win in this battleground state if everything goes to plan. While it may seem unrealistic, I remember what it looks like when everything goes to plan for the Democratic Party. I remember what it looks like in the 2022 midterms when Democrats defied expectations and expanded seats in the United States Senate. What it looked like in 2022 when Democrats were winning the overwhelming majority of battleground toss-up seats in the House of Representatives. That Kevin McCarthy, just weeks before the election, said Republicans are expecting to gain potentially upwards of 40 to 50 to 60 seats. Republicans won roughly 10 more seats than they had in 2020 overall. That's far from impressive. And the reason and the ways that these things get done is because Democrats at the national level invest and Democrats at the local level organize. And when it comes down to Texas, while I still think Ted Cruz is the fundamental favorite, given a lot of what we know about that state, Colin Allred has a fighting chance. And Colin Allred has a non-zero chance of being Texas's next United States senator. And that's why Democrats are so invested. That's why Democrats are focusing on this state for the first time, the first time 
since the 2002 midterm elections. This is great news for the Democratic Party and great news for Colin Allred, who's running behind Ted Cruz when it comes down to fundraising data, running behind when it comes down of years served in electoral office to go experience to experience for the voters in the state of Texas. But overall, Ted Cruz is an unpopular guy, and voters see that. And voters start to like Colin Allred as a response. His approval rating in the positives, Ted Cruz is in the negatives, overall good signs for the Democratic campaign in Texas. And Democrats are now waking up to it and starting to invest in a state that even Fox News refers to as a toss-up. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the top bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server if you can go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.